Hello everyone, I'm Mohammed Sadri. It's a while, uh, maybe it's around two years I'm using the Zinc Ultrascale Plus device in my project. And I have decided to create a series of videos in which I cover some topics related to working with Zinc Ultrascale device. So I have decided to call this series of videos Zinc Ultrascale Plus and Petalinex. And this first video is only a brief overview on what I am going to cover in the near future videos that I'm going to create. So first of all, um, I will have a quick tour of Zinc Ultrascale Plus PS. The PS in Zinc Ultrascale Plus device is way more complicated than the Zinc 7000, you know. So um, Xilinx has created a PS with three, at least three processors there, you know. So we have PMU, we have the ARM Cortex um, R, the real time cores, and then um, A, the, those who are for application. And then in terms of peripherals, it's much more extended in comparison to the previous um, Zinc 7000. So we have a larger range of peripherals real-time processing unit application processing unit so it's more complicated in comparison to the previous one and i'm going to have a quick tour of that however it will be only a quick tour because every xilinx uh, seminar contains description of dps then i will go through um, a simple ultra scale zinc uh, a simple design um, for Zinc Ultra Scale, it will contain the Zinc PS, it will contain also a microblaze. So, the topics that I have decided to cover in this series of videos, I try to um, show them in this design a design in which you have two processors, kind of heterogeneous computing platform, you have accelerators. You have um, you have basically two DRAM memories. One is residing on the PS, another one is residing on the PL. There are a lot of topics we can cover here. So we, we start with a first uh, Zinc Ultra Scale design. Um, we create the design. Um, this is basically what I showed you, and then. Um, for this design, we go ahead, we build Petal Linux, and then we talk about bringing up Petal Linux uh, on SD card from JTAG, from QSPI Flash. And one important point is during these videos, my main target board will be ZCU102, probably in some parts. I have to switch to ZCU104 because there's a VCU there uh, in the Zinc device there. Otherwise, the ZCU102 is the main target. Then uh, we go and talk about or show how we can access GPIO, I2C, SPI. These basic peripherals inside Petal Linux. So we have a design. The design contains um, I2C controllers both in the PL and the PS. SPI controllers both in the PL and the PS and same for GPIOs. How do I access these peripherals inside Petal Linux under Linux? The next interesting topic that I will cover is how do I use the GPU? So there's a GPU inside Zinc PS, Zinc Ultra Scale Plus PS and um, and you can use it. This is not really a powerful GPU in terms of processing power it's really limited however it can be used for normal applications normal 3d view applications not not very intensive ones but normal ones so it's interesting to see how we can use the gpu and how let's say to develop a simple opengl based application and run on the cu102 and see the output so this is another topic that i will I will cover during these videos. Then um, 
obviously you start developing custom IPs and placing them in the PL um, it's interesting to know when I create a custom IP and I put it in the PL how can I access it from my Linux so there's a very basic method to access the IP from PS from ARM Cortex A core that I have and that's to use MMAP so we will have a video in which we cover how can I use MMAP to talk to my peripheral that I have developed and it's residing on the PL and then obviously I will try to show you how you can create a character device driver a kernel level driver so that you can talk to your peripheral in the PL okay and I do this under Petal Linux so this is a simple character this will be a simple character device driver not a very advanced driver I can maybe create a set of videos in which I talk about how to create more advanced drivers um, those may not be free so then a very interesting topic that I would I will do my best to cover is how can I use the uh, Cortex R5 ARM core this is this is this is a very interesting unit um, that you can use if you application that has functional safety requirements I, I'm sure this is one unit you are looking at because it can satisfy up to a very good level these um, AZIL uh, functional safety requirement levels and um, but on the other hand this is a very good source of in fact processing and it's a very good unit to control the peripherals yes the a then we go ahead with our design we start discussing how your cpu core which is residing in the pl can synchronize can share data and can talk to to your arm cores which are which are residing on the ps this is also a very uh, interesting topic and it's very useful especially again when you have a functional safety requirements and let's say in the PL you have microblaze, two microblaze cores running in lockstep or you have three, three microblaze cores and uh, then you want all of these parts to work together to be able to communicate together this is a very interesting topic I will try to cover it um, then another very interesting topic is dealing with PL DRAM PL DRAM can be really useful when you have an application um, in which you have IP cores in the PL that need large amount of memory with relatively low latency okay so then your IP cores can go directly to a PL DRAM so I will cover the topics like here when I'm creating my own custom board how do I basically decide which pins should be used for PLDRAM how, how do I do the process of pin assignment and then we I try also to cover so imagine now you have a board it has a PLDRAM and how do I use it you know so I have um, I have Petalinux running so basically I have two DRAM memories two address spaces on which a DRAM is residing so how do I use these address ranges how, how, how I put my arrays there we go ahead with another very interesting topic maybe this one is not really related to Peta Linux even it's not really related to Zinc Ultra Scale Plus but this is something I really see useful this is Xilinx parameterized micros you know so previously like old days when we needed a block memory inside our design like we needed a FIFO, a block memory. The solution, one solution was we, we, we were basically generating the IP and then instantiating the IP inside our design. And another solution was you directly code it in RTL. But now these Xilinx parameterized micros are very interesting because basically um, they provide you with very principal and basic 
IP blocks like memory, b block memory like FIFO, and they are fully parameterizable. So you can directly um, um, use them in your RTL and with the parameters that you assign when you are instantiating this uh, XPM with the parameters you com completely control the size, the latency, the width of this IP, you know and this is very interesting, you know why? because for example uh, imagine you are, you are developing a piece of RTL that um, should be multi-platform, you know so for example someone wants to use this IP on Zinc 7000 and then you want to be able basically very fast to switch to Zinc Ultra Scale Plus, you know, so you want to switch from this platform easily to another platform without without re um, without reproducing the IP, you know, it helps you to have a really portable code. So this is something we will cover. Um, then we go ahead with cache coherent interconnect. This is another very interesting topic in Zinc Ultra Scale Plus. If you look at the Zinc PS. If we remember the old Zinc 7000, there was a um, ACP port, accelerator coherency port. Okay, and this ACP port is uh, still here. So the PS still has a ACP port. So, um, but the ACP port, it had basically a problem. You know. You, whenever you you are putting your accelerator on the ACP port, then when the accelerator was initiating a set of transactions, these transactions were basically passing through the cache inside the PS. You know, so for example, when your accelerator wanted to read a specific address in the DRAM memory in the PS DRAM memory and that a specific address was already residing the data for that address was already residing on the cache in the in, inside the ps then your transaction would end up um, would result much faster so basically your transaction was not going to DRAM memory but it was ending up in the cache and then your accelerator was providing with the date was provided with the data um, so but this 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 had a problem you know the problem is it's one way it's not a two-way coherency it's a one-way coherency basically if my accelerator um, reads a specific address in the DRAM memory and caches the data for that address inside its own let's say memory okay or inside its own cache if the CPU changes that address address location in the DRAM memory with the ACP your accelerator does not have any way to find out that the CPU has changed that address now there is this um, ACE port which provides you a two-way coherency Basically, here, if the CPU changes that address range, your accelerator can find out. This is very interesting, and I will try to cover this during a one or some set of videos. So, then um, I would like to talk about high speed serial interfaces. I have never been talking about this in, in any videos, and these are extremely interesting. These are in the PL. Um, also the PS has four, G four GTRs you know so they are also very interesting but the GTH and the GTY inside the PL they are extremely interesting and you can do a lot a lot of different things with them so maybe this video will be an introductory video I don't know it depends how much hardware that time I have to show you some practical projects personally I have used them a lot both the GTH and GTY so GTY recently we are using for 100 gigabit Ethernet um, so this is this is a very interesting topic and um, then another interesting topic I have worked worked on for a very long time and I have never covered covered it in any video is the PCI Express interfaces 
So for Zinc Ultra Escape Plus, you have PCIe cores both in the PL and in the PS. And it's a very interesting topic. How can I use them? Um, and how is the driver development process? Okay, so these videos, again, may not be free, but this is something I will create. This is very interesting and very useful. So one thing is, um, Peta Linux already provides a good set of drivers for PCI Express cores, you know, and maybe the first step is to use them. However, personally, whenever I wanted to use any of PCI Express cores, I have developed my own driver. This is this is another interesting topic. Okay, so these are the topics I want to cover in these videos. A uh, very important point is th th this video is only a hobby video. And this I'm creating this for myself absolutely no guarantee of correctness of whatever i say however I, sh I i do my best to show all of the concepts on the board on the real hardware to show the concept works fine this video is not supported by anyone totally hobby video thanks for watching see you in the next video bye